What is the buzz like now as we get ready for the match against Clare? Look, I suppose it's been a fantastic summer in Limerick. I don't think anyone could have foreseen that at the start of the year, you know, to, to come and win a Munster Championship and a Munster Minor Championship as mm -hmm. well. It's been it's been unprecedented in Limerick for uh, for a very, very long time. But um, look, all the talk the last couple of weeks has been about this game. Um, the fact that so many Limerick people are working in places like Shannon and Ennis and Erhalden in, in Kilkeel, Hinch, all these places, and vice versa, you know, the Clare crowd coming in. Um, there's been fantastic banter the last couple of weeks. Um, I suppose as well, you know, uh, we've obviously had our success, but you know, Clare have been very successful midweek as well, having beaten Tipperary. They're in All Ireland semi final, and uh, they're certainly not going to fear Limerick. Clare traditionally never had a fear of Limerick, um, and I think uh, you know the fact that a lot of these guys will all have played with one another. Yeah. I suppose in in College uh, teams in colleges, like it, yeah. you know, um, Hearty Cup as well. They'll know one, uh, one another inside out. But I suppose the big thing, obviously, there's a prize here at stake, and that's an All Ireland final appearance. But um, I suppose the one thing about Limerick Clare, it's it, it's a very very intense rivalry, probably more so than even uh, Cork Limerick mm. or or Tipperary Limerick. And I think, you know, I suppose bragging rights at the end of the day. <laughs> Limerick won't want to be beaten by Clare. And even from talking to the lads, remember last year, uh, Clare had won uh, some of the earlier games in the league. But, you know, when it came to the championship, Limerick got the edge that day. And it was just a relief that the lads had. Look, we don't want to be beaten by Clare. And I think that's going to make for, for, uh, for a fantastic occasion mm -hmm. next Sunday. I reckon there's going to be, look, 60, uh, close on 70,000 people travelling up. Um, Everyone will be travelling. There'll be no one left in... Uh, <laughs> Uh, Shannon's side next yeah. week. Well, after today, it'll only be added to. Now, Ali made a reference there, Liam, to Clare winning the 21 Championship midweek. Is there any significance in that in relation to next week's game? I, yeah, I think winning is a great habit to have, you know, whatever age group. I think it's all about the county and how the county is doing. And there's serious momentum, momentum building in Clare right now in, in terms of hurling. And I mean, mm. we probably expected this day to come at some stage. I mean, their 21 team in, in 2009. I mean, it's been really, the foundations have been built on that team. They were a very exciting team, won the 21 again last year. So they have winning underage teams coming through. But I mean, they've really blended in well. And like, again, when we talk about work rate and intensity, I mean, this Clare team are working extremely hard. Hard, you know, most yeah. teams now they're out muscling them and they're very, very fit. They're breaking onto the ball, they have a nice style of play now as well. They're, you know, I thought their game last Wednesday night was very impressive in terms of their sharp passes out to the midfield into the half hours over the bar. So, like, clear a team that are making serious progression and like they have winning momentum coming in. You know, they've gone through the qualifiers and like beating Galway the last day. You know, all he talks about rivalry, like, clear Galway would, would be great rivalry as well. Sure. And I mean, getting over the line there was massive for them. So, they're coming up here. With great, with great ambitions and like you know, Limerick are going to meet a serious hurdle in, in, in Clare next weekend. Eddie, Limerick have a five week gap as well, a bit like Dublin had. Did today prove that the five week delay without a game doesn't matter? No, I don't think it does. Um, you know, in the past maybe it has, but I, I, I can I suppose, I suppose speak from our own experience. You know, we often you know had that position, but we went away, played club matches. You kind of got away from the setup maybe, and then I think it's about preparation. I suppose John Allen is one fella that has a good head on his shoulders. He'll be planning ahead, and you kind of plan your three weeks that you run into a match, and you let him off to the club. And you know, naturally enough, there was great hype in Limerick afterwards, so they had to celebrate it and enjoy it, and and, they, and well entitled you'd have to. So. That it got away from the setup, and now you know maybe three weeks beforehand you're back in again, game face on, and I suppose you just measure it in, and that's and that's an important thing. I suppose that after a big championship match, you probably need a little time to come back down, get the injuries, the little knocks, and everything right. So I don't see it as an issue. Um, I think if Anthony can, it can often be a help. I suppose lads get get out of the system a little bit, and they can look forward. You had forward. club championship as well, hadn't you? They had, and I think yeah. that I think that was a critical factor as well. I think before, if Limerick were in that position, you know, the county board tend to make a decision that you know no games were going to be played, and I always felt that that came against us, um, you know, in the running uh, to matches. Yeah. But you know, uh, county board have definitely got this right. They decided. Um, uh, I suppose last week that you know there was definitely going to be county championship matches, and straight away that took the focus from the Munster final, yeah. and it was going to be all about your your club and performing for your club. And that's the one thing I think John Allen has has always emphasised: you've got to go and perform for your club as well. Um, which you know Limerick the last two or three weeks, I know they've had it. I suppose very very intense training sessions um, on the run in now to the to the Clare game. Yeah. We were talking about the tactics today, Liam, in Croke Park and how Dublin and Cork set up. We've asked. You and Eddie to look at the various setups. So, you're having a look at the Limerick setup for us. 
Yeah, I've seen Limerick play in all the matches this year, you know, and I think I've been intrigued in terms of the way they change their dynamic, you know, and I think obviously I'm trying to call it out here in terms of, like Declan Hammond, Hannon early on, he drifts out, of, out towards James Ryan and Seamus Hickey is given a free rein to get back in and support and I think they're really trying to structure themselves to say that they're not going to concede a goal early on in a game and I think that's how they're setting themselves up and here you can see Seamus Hickey, you know, regularly you'll see him coming back in uh, inside his own 65 and he'll, he'll go and win his ball, but not just does he win the ball, he knows then, well that's only part of his job He's got to get forward and he's getting up straight away as Paul Brown and Donald O'Grady work the ball up. He's looking to get up and support. And like he'll do this time and time again. And I think he's very clear on the role he needs to play. And he's got to be, you know, he uses all his energy for as long as he can. He gets back, works again, gets the ball out. And all the time he's looking up, he's not going to puck the ball. But yeah. like he's very clear in his role. You can see him going off the field here. You know, he's, he's work done and Shane Downing is coming in. But he knows that it's okay because that's what the team, it's very much drilled into him. Some guys are going to have guys coming out firing the helmet or doing whatever else. But Shane Downing comes in, he knows now that this is his time to produce. He gets in a great block down in Kieran Bergen and he puts the ball over the bar and you know the dynamic has changed in the team now and again he's popping up now. He's fresh and I think you know Shane Shane is given you know a lot of people maybe are raising eyebrows when he's not starting. But I think most interestingly of all then you know when he does come on they now get Declan Hannon. Declan Hannon has has stopped playing out in deep, out around the 45. Yeah. He's gone back in in the edge of the square. He's in against Shane O'Neill, who's a very, very uh, talented player. Catches the ball and puts it over the bar. So it is really around, they change the dynamic with the players. They know exactly how they're set up to start the game. They change yeah. it in at some stage in the second half. Declan Hannon goes back in the edge of the square. And it's worked really well for them. Now, if I know David Fitzgerald, he'll have watched that. He'll have read into it. So it'll be very, very interesting to see exactly how the tactics work out. But that's exactly how Limerick have set themselves up this yeah. year so far. And it's proved really successful for them. Okay, interesting. And Eddie, you, you've been looking at the Clare setup. Yeah, again, I suppose, just on to I suppose go back on what Liam said there, that's going to be hugely interesting, the battle on the sideline. Yeah. because um, And just looking at Clare's setup, um, you know, Davy, it's built on high work rate, but uh, I suppose in general, Podge Collins, we have him sitting there just in front of Tony Kelly, but he has a licence to roam and he generally does roam all over the place. But um, back in the Waterford match, this is Tony Kelly picking up the ball on his own half back line, and you just look at the green grass that's around him. There's Brick Welsh, his direct marker. And he just takes them on, he just scores them on the outside. And I suppose what I'm looking at here is the runs of the other forwards. They're pulling Clare or Waterford defenders out of the way, making the room for Tony Kelly to come through there and their movement the whole time. But I suppose you look at uh, Conor McGrath here now, you know, in acres of space here. And I think Davy is trying to get him to play a measured game where they look up and find the man in the best position. And it's a great ball across. And you just have Fergal Moore coming across here and he's forced to go with the runner which opens the door for Conor McGrath to go in there and finish the great goal. And I think Conor McGrath is a, a brilliant finisher. I love watching him because he's very cool when he gets mm. in close to goal and, and you know, shortens up the hurl. This in the league match against Kilkenny, which they could well have won, did a lot of wides the same day, but you could see what they were trying to do. Tommy Welch up on his own half-forward line. Tony Kelly taking him on and just sends, a, I suppose, a high ball in around. And uh, this is uh, Conor Galvin finishing it to the net. But you can see what they're doing. They were pulling defenders out and I was, remember watching that match that day and they, they had Kilkenny in bother with that running after him but this is last year in the league semi-final and uh, Brendan Bugler when you look at Conor McGrath look he's in one-on-one -on -one with JJ Delaney in acres of space and I suppose Davy. this is the message I suppose Davy was trying to get into them yeah. that he wants them to play that kind of game where they have loads of space the boys are working hard this is what it's essentially built on is hard work they're unbelievably faced clear and they carry a lot of ball Podge Collins you know we've highlighted him already this yeah. year he's an integral part of it but so too is Tony Kelly, John Conlon, Conor Ryan. They all play their role. They sit back, Patrick Donlan sits back just on the full back yeah. and minds it. And I think it's going to be very interesting. Again, John Allen, I'm sure, will have watched yeah. Clear in action yeah. and will be planning you know, yeah. a game plan. There could be a lot of traffic around the middle, I think. Yeah. You could see a very tight match, but uh, it really sets up an intriguing tactical battle as much as the 15 boys that take to the pitch. Yeah. And added to by the drama of today, Ali, isn't it? The, the excitement about next week? Well, of course, but I suppose, look, uh, both Limerick and Clare, I'd say, will we'll watch tonight and that'll be, it. you know, all their focus obviously going to be on next week. But just following up, I suppose, from one point that Eddie was making there about, about how, how Clare... Uh, set up like it is very systematic you know what I mean and uh, I suppose the one thing Limerick will try and do is try and get into Clare's face very very early on in the game and uh, you know they have two contrastants I'll both pay, play a very high octane type uh, type game I think Limerick tend to rely more on physicality whereas Clare rely on their system um, I suppose to a larger degree and, uh, and I suppose you know if their system if, if there's one criticism Clare people maybe have at times is that you know uh, so they tend to be too systematic at times, you know. So again, it'll be interesting to see what way the game pans out next Sunday.
That's the thing. It is. It's 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 a little bit rigid in that. So, I mean, it's great when it works, and I suppose that's the the thin margins when you're playing such a percentage a precise mm. game. You know, the sharp passes they have to be precise and. I think what Davy has is a really talented bunch of hurlers and they're buying into that system. I think he tried this with Watford. You go back to the 2010 semi-final, John Milan was up front on his own for a while. I remember they pulled a lot of numbers back. Paddy Stapleton was wore out poking ball out that day. So I suppose it's the preferred system that yeah. Davy is, is going with and these boys are executing it for him now. Okay, well, obviously it's a difficult one to call, but if, if, you, if you're pushed, Liam... Yeah, I, I, again, I think it'll be a really, really good game. Uh, if I was pushed, I just think Limerick are building serious momentum. You know, I know clear of momentum on the 21s, but uh, 21s and seniors, but likewise, Limerick have it with the minors and yeah, the seniors. Yeah. So, I mean, they're taking over Munster at the moment. We all may look out, but uh, in fairness to them, I just think Limerick, uh, I, I was really impressed with them in their two matches today, and I think Limerick will just have enough. Yeah. Eddie? Yeah, I suppose, um, I've, you know, initially when they got through in the semi-final, Claire, I've gone with them and I'm going to stick with them. I think um, they have the players to, 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 make it, to make it effective. But uh, again, it comes down to, you know, if, if the system is not working, you know, do they persist? You know, will they persist with it? And, and, and someti sometimes right. that can throw a team a little bit. So right. there's no point in asking all the other. Absolutely not. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> You're clear all the way. <laughs> all right, well, thank you, lads. That's about it for...